Rashad Bateman, Zay Flowers, Nelson Aguilar, Tez Walker, Tylen Wallace, Deontay Hardy. I don't think I'm missing anybody, but if I am, please let me know. But going into this season, those are the current Baltimore Ravens wide receiver. That's how their room is looking. You, of course, got some undrafted free agents as well. And you got the potential of adding some more. But that's who it is right here right now is that enough for the baltimore ravens to get the job done how do you feel about our wide receiver room ryan we got of course my guy from the flock rundown coming through again to bless us with his intellect on our baltimore ravens and his intellect on our wide receiver room how you feel it's gonna look and it's gonna appreciate you having me on again bro um i like the receiving core i mean it's scary though it's risky it's it's a little thin um, so my concern is that they all stay healthy, you know, obviously, particularly Bateman, I think stands out, uh, Bateman's going to get trusted with a lot more responsibility. And I think if you watch the games, you watch the film, he has the talent. I mean, there's mm -hmm. no way to argue that this guy couldn't be a great receiver in the NFL. He has to stay on the field. That's the biggest concern. So I think I'm concerned with the overall group a little bit because of, if Zay or Bateman go down, now we're relying on Nelson Aguilar and a you know potential rookie, I guess, and Tez Walker. I'm not sure what kind of role he's going to have in in the first year. I would expect he's kind of filling in in a deep threat, you know, defined yeah. role. I don't know if he's going to be trusted to run every route in the route tree and and pick up you know a lot of key first downs for us and come through in meaningful situations. We'll see. That'd be awesome. But I'm just yeah. it's hard to put you know that much weight into a fourth round rookie so and i do trust nelson but would you be comfortable with nelson being your one or two if there's an injury at the top so i think uh it is concerning i do trust that the talent is good enough i think that zay bateman nelson aguilar tez walker you know deontay hardy is an interesting addition too. quick i know he's going to be back on the receiver depth chart but quick quick receiver great returner i think he's mainly brought in to be a returner yeah. um tylen wallace we know kind of what he already brings to the table um I, I i think that the group is good enough you know another year in this offense they're very comfortable with the todd munkin scheme i think that that's just going to evolve lamar's chemistry with these guys is going to evolve not too often are we bringing back the same exact core in the same offense you know we just last year dealing with a complete overall offensive change so that takes half a year or so to even gel and figure out what's working best and how to best utilize the personnel. So I think, uh, I think on paper, I trust it and it is good enough, but with an injury or two to any of the key guys, I'm very concerned. So yeah. take that for what it is. We also can't forget that, um, you know, I know it's not a receiver, but like Mark Andrews and Isaiah likely are also in the past game. So I think that, right. Having both of them helps a lot, you know, helps alleviate a lot of that pressure. So it's not all on Bateman and Zay. Zay is going to Zay is going to ball. I think, you know, year one, he proved that already. So I'm not as concerned with that. I uh, We just haven't seen Bateman go off. We haven't seen him be in this important role yet. So it it's concerning that he's going to stay available for 90 percent of the season. I think that that's what I'm most concerned about. But I trust him if he's out there. Now, a couple of questions. You already touched on uh, Rashad Bateman, and you feel like the talent is certainly there. But with Zay Flowers, um, I remember a couple of weeks ago, there was – it's always debates going around with Ravens Flock, which I love and appreciate. Oh, yeah. um, but the question was, can Zay Flowers or is Zay Flowers a wide receiver one? How do you feel about that? Do you think he is or has potential to be Ravens wide receiver one? Yeah, I think he he is our wide receiver one. I mean, whether he is a wide receiver one, I guess it's just how you define that, really. You know, there's always two receivers out there for the most part. So I I, I think uh, he's our go to guy. He's the most trusted receiver out there. We're going to use him in a variety of ways. Is he a traditional wide receiver one body where he's just, you know, a guy that you can just constantly in any situation, red zone, jump ball, throw it to him? No, I think Bateman's going to have to assume some of those roles um and 
the tight ends, you know, Mark Andrews is going to be those guys in the red zone and stuff and Isaiah likely. So I think uh, it's a balanced attack. Is Zay a traditional wide receiver one that you would automatically think of? No, but he's definitely our wide receiver one and his production stat wise is going to show that. I think, I think that we just get him the ball in so many different ways, you know, Tyree kills the wide receiver one in Miami and he doesn't look right. like a typical wide receiver one that you would assume like a Justin Jefferson or a Jamar chase or somebody like that. So we don't have one of those guys, but Zay's our wide receiver one. And I, and I'm cool with it. I think, I think Zay's got the talent to, to thrive in that role. Now, when we spoke about the wide receivers too, um, you brought up Mark Andrews and Isaiah likely, and they certainly are going to be a big part of Baltimore Ravens passing game. But one thing that I, I wonder about all the time, I've been thinking about it, like wondering what's going on for years. Why do you think that with the Ravens? Because if we see one of them on the field, like Mark Andrews by himself, oh, he's going off. We saw last year when Isaiah Likely was on the field, when he's by himself, going off like crazy. But why do you think when it's the both of them that it just it hasn't happened yet? Yeah, Todd Munkin's got to figure that out. I think that that's a priority. I don't think that they had enough time to figure that out completely last year. I think that with I, because you got to think we we completely overhauled the offense last year bringing Munkin in. So it's kind of hard to ever take the Greg Roman years into consideration right now, just because Todd Munkin's calling an entirely different offense. Um, so it's just a small sample size until Mark got hurt that we really didn't see Isaiah likely thrive last year. I mm -hmm. think that. The fact he exploded so much and really excelled in the opportunity when Mark went down, Todd Munkin has to find a way to get them both involved this year, both out on the field. I think we're going to go with heavier sets sometimes because we got Derrick Henry and we're going to give a run look. And now you have three options. You're going to create so many mismatches with yeah. Isaiah Likely against linebackers, you know, because the defense is going to try and match you thinking that we're going to run with Derrick Henry or Lamar is going to pull it, maybe hit the outside with his speed. But now you got more mismatches inside. So I think that there's a lot of uh, situations that we'll be able to take advantage of by appearing to go heavy and then using Isaiah and Mark as weapons. Um, but, you know, Tom Monk has got to figure that out. They, Isaiah likely has to be involved in this offense more than he's ever been at, in the backup tight end role. Obviously, when he's the starter, he's, you know, he's one of the best players out there. So, uh He's got to figure that out. I, I I just think that there wasn't enough time last year, and maybe he didn't trust. Maybe it took Isaiah breaking out, you know what I mean, for Todd Munkin to kind of be like, shoot, like there's no way we can't have this guy involved. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Now, um, with the wide receivers, you brought up a good point that I never really thought about. Uh, you talked about the consistency uh, as far as the wide receivers that are returning from a previous season because normally uh Ravens can have a lot of turnover in that department and yeah Zay Flowers last year was his first year he's back Rashad Bateman he's back they signed Nelson Aguilar to a one-year extension so he'll be back Tylen Wallace he'll be back as well the only one um who will be gone is Odell Beckham Jr so that is a lot of the same receivers from the previous year uh, and while you did say you feel that that could be and should be enough for the Baltimore Ravens can you or do you see them potentially adding even more, especially with June 1st coming up? Uh, do you see the Ravens standing pat where they are at the wide receiver position or do you see them possibly adding somebody else? I think that they're going to stay pat until they see what they got. I think uh, I don't see a signing. And I know this isn't as entertaining as it'd be fun to add some people, but I think that <laughs> I think that they're going to stay where they're at through training camp see who stays healthy if there's a bunch of injuries at that position we're definitely making a move we're definitely bringing in more bodies mm -hmm. if everyone's healthy rolling into the regular season i think that they're going to roll this core out um but that's not to say that you know four weeks in or the trade deadline that we we don't make a move out of necessity i think that eric DaCosta has shown that he's not afraid to pull the trigger and if a move is necessary i think that they'll go make that move so I don't think they're going to make a move in the short term, but okay. it only takes an injury or two or someone really just not performing and things not going well for them to get aggressive and make a move because this team is ready to win now. And I don't think that we have a ton of years to be sitting here rolling out 
weak receiving cores that, you know, <laughs> aren't going to support Lamar Jackson as much as he needs to be supported. So I think I think for now they're going to stay pat. OK. All right. So we'll see how it goes and we'll see if the Baltimore Ravens wide receiver room is good enough to get the job done. Or if Eric DeCasse, hey, if you want to make some moves or add some more to it, especially quality, no problem with me. Never. My guy, Ryan, appreciate you. Appreciate, appreciate you for coming you. on. Appreciate your, your time. Appreciate your input. And, and let everybody know before we get out of here where they can find you at. The Flock Rundown, YouTube, also been throwing stuff on TikTok, too. So, uh, yeah, just the Flock Rundown. You can just search that, and that's the, that's the channel. Yeah, appreciate you having me on, man. Yeah, it's an honor. Sure. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. So I have all the links to everything down below in the description. So Team Keep It Clean, y'all can check him out. Make sure you subscribe to his channel. Uh, follow him on Twitter. And then go follow him on TikTok as well. Everything will be down below. Appreciate y'all. Make sure you subscribe here. Leave a like on the video and turn the notifications on so you do not miss not a single update or a single special guest like we had him on. Appreciate y'all. We out.